Hello, everyone. This is Kyla from Hidden Gems Literary Emporium. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Link Thompson, all the way from Florida. St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. That's yep. in Florida, right? Yep. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Mr. Thompson is the author of this book, which is on display here at Hidden Gems. Honor our honoring our creator. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Link. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so my first question is, so your real name is Link? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know that there's a video game character named Link? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know the story behind how you were given that name? Uh, not really, because my grandfather was Lars. My dad was Logan. And it was, it's kind of a rather common name in Norway. So that's mm. how it that happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, so this book, I'm just going to start by saying this. I like how you said in this book that you don't care about grammatical errors because this is your book and you're going to write it the way that you want to. <laughs> My rules. <laughs> I didn't do that well in college in English. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and you talk about that in your book too. Um, talk a little, oh, just start by introducing yourself, telling us why you decided to write this book and then we'll go into everything else. Well, my name is Link Thompson and I wrote it as a primarily as a memoir for the benefit of my grandchildren. Uh, but also I felt like I owed some, uh, support for Jesus and uh, his desire for all of us to serve uh, and spread his, his name, his good name around from one to another, which is what it says in Matthew 28. And some of the things that I also discovered along the way is, uh, as you noticed, uh, the book is dedicated to the donkey. So uh, I felt the need to kind of be in a farm boy. And uh, I thought it was my job, my uh, uh, commission on the uh, to uh, spread the word of the donkey and how important he is in, uh, uh, the, throughout the Bible and in support of uh, what uh, Jesus did for us on the cross because the donkey also has a cross. The thing about the donkey is his cross was created when uh, our creator created the world in the donkey or whenever that was, but it was well before Jesus was uh, uh, born. And when Jesus passed away on the cross and did his part for our salvation, uh, then the, uh, to, to my way of thinking, that donkey came along and uh, kind of notarized uh, the, what Jesus did for us because uh, I picked up on that thought when, when I got my law school degree. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. Okay, and so thinking about your degrees, well, mm -hmm. education in general. Mm -hmm. Talk uh -huh. a little bit about, and you touch on this in the book, talk a little bit about your education and mm -hmm. why you said that you don't care if you have any errors in this book because you're the author. I really like that. <laughs> I don't know how deep I could go into that. I just had a rough time getting, uh, being a country boy, uh, coming out of a country school. Uh, I didn't uh, do that well. And when I went to a major university, such as the University of Oregon, and all those professors, you know, they're pretty smart, but they they didn't exactly uh, like the way I did my first uh, request to write something about myself. And I, I just made every single error in the book, I think, and got a big bad F, my very first one when I got to school. And I just got, I thought, well, we'll just kind of humorize that a little bit and and uh, bring it out in the book and uh, think, well, I'm just trying my best, but I, but, and uh, I chose to use three explanation marks mostly to, uh, to uh, honor the, uh, the, the Trinity. And uh, so I thought, well, we might as well put three explanation marks everywhere. And uh, I said, well, that's gonna be my rules because I, my wish is to honor the Trinity as well. <laughs> I, we, Raymond and I have read a lot of books and I think your book is the first one where the author said 
this is what I'm doing. And if you don't like it, oh, well. And I'm doing this because this is my book. And I think that a lot of people can learn from that Mm -hmm. and, you know, have more confidence in what they're doing, Uh especially young children who maybe they didn't get the best grades or they weren't straight A students. Uh, Maybe they had a teacher who said, if you don't have perfect English, you will not be successful. But now we have an example, you know, Mr. Link Thompson, who didn't do the best in school, but here he is a published author. I think that's a great message to spread. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called uh, just put your nose to the grindstone and uh, and work hard and uh, and uh, be kind to all people. Uh, we're all one big family under the Lord, and uh, that's just the, the way I think. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. So, Mr. Link. So, my husband. I, I usually facilitate the interviews, but Ray and Truth are just as much a part of anything that we do. So Ray just slipped me a note when he heard me talk about your name, Link. And it says, Legend of Zelda is heavily based on Norse mythology. And Link, that character, has a horse who only rides for him. Hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh, so you learn something new every day. Yeah, sure. Every That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, so let's talk about your incredibly interesting career that you talk about a lot in the book. For okay, for those of you who are going to be watching this video, you mm-hmm. were were or are an airplane pilot. Were I? I I'm retired now, I, but okay, I retired. Not Air Force pilot and an airline pilot, and uh, it is on the back of the book there. A little spot back on the back that shows what I did back then. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I'm just going to read it really quick. An Air Force fighter pilot and later an international airline pilot who has covered most of our Mother Earth and who became familiar with the majority of all mankind and major man made Earth religions. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to talk about there. I want to start by asking you when you were a child, did you always want to be a pilot? A pilot? Did you always want to be a pilot? No, because I didn't know I could be one. Oh wow! When did you find out you could be one? Uh, when I got in the Air Force, and uh, and I got started getting educated, and all of a sudden, of course, the Vietnam War broke out, so they were looking looking for anybody that was breathing, you know, and that was I was breathing, so I guess I was eligible to become a pilot. So and. I, and uh, and, and the one thing I had some, uh, uh, let's see, what's the word? I had some uh, t- talents like in electronics and things like that. Maybe not so good in English, but I could do other things, you know? And so I qualified to become an airline pilot. I just had to go through training, but first they had to send me to college to get my degree because that was a requirement. So they sent me to the University of Oklahoma and that there I graduated from and then went straight to Air Force pilot training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your very first time flying a plane. Okay. What did it feel like? Uh, I felt very free. Wow. I felt like the uh, world was mine now uh, to, to enjoy. And, mm. I, and I think all the years I flew, I felt that all the time, every time I flew. And in the book, you'll see I did a lot of flying around the mountains and, mm-hmm. and around Mexico, looking for whales and looking for this and that around the Bahamas. I felt you feel like a bird and uh, it just, you know, gets folly with your nose and, and enjoy the world. And as a result, I've gotten to see an awful lot. And then at high altitude, you get to see a lot of star formations that are all not always clear from down below because of all the uh, uh, clutter of the uh, atmosphere. So uh, I, uh, I enjoy it. I think I enjoyed every second I ever flew. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You said something in the book that actually reminded me of something my father used to tell me all the time when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And you talk about how pilots see and observe and appreciate the creations of our creator because you, like you just said, you have a viewpoint that not many people who are here 
just walking around on the ground get to have. And I, I would assume, I mean, I've never been up there. Well, I've been on a few planes, but when you are regularly up there in the air, you kind of have a new appreciation for the creator and his creation. My father used to tell me that as a child. That's exactly right. And also I, I repeated the words of uh, one of the astronauts that walked uh, on the moon and up there he said, you know, I, there are no atheists in outer space. He just gave full credit to everything he saw to our creator. Uh, it was a beautiful place for him. And for me, about the highest I ever got was about 65,000 feet. And wow. I know it was a little bit different color up there, uh, just dark, darker blue. And also my, most of my flying when I was in the airlines was somewhere above 35,000 feet. And it, it just becomes a little bit more clear up there, you know, and all those star formations uh, start to become a little bit more clear. And I saw some of the things like one of the uh, asteroids come through, you know, just things that are uh, just a, a pleasure that, that I, I've had and I appreciate them so much. And I don't have, you know, I just feel so gifted as a result of that. I was so mm. blessed that's a blessing in itself you know among you know among other kinds of blessing that our creator can bestow upon us but that was mm -hmm. also a, a really one of a major blessing from uh, uh choosing uh, the, to fly uh mm -hmm. and a step forward to get that job you just don't get to be a pilot pilot by uh, just by luck you have to really make a solid effort because it is a, a full-time job you know mm. So right. Took a lot of effort, but it was worth every penny. Every, every second, it was worth every second. I'd do it again in a flash. <laughs> wow. I'm yeah. sure you would. Um, and I, I think that being at that elevation is something that a lot of people dream about and think yeah. about. But, mm -hmm. you know, I have a friend from college who actually started taking flight classes. And it is something that is attainable just for anybody who will be listening. Mm -hmm. You can go and take flight classes and you can fly a plane, right? That's exactly right. And then I think one thing that's very important for here to understood, to understand, when I joined the Air Force, my very first, my very first boss was African American. And all and all, and he just taught me all the kinds of things that I just love to hear. Uh, mm. We had such a good, uh, friendly teamwork. And also during the time when I was flying fighters, I also had several African American pilots doing exact same thing. So it's not limited to anybody. It's right. all you have to do is step forward and go for it. And, uh, and th that's the bottom line: just go for it and do it. And that's uh, the, and that's the, that's the biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, I love in the book how you talk about transferable energy. Mm -hmm. Raymond and I talk about this too. And mm -hmm. you talk about how, uh, how energy is passed from one form of life to another. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the two most powerful forms of energy, which are, I wrote them down. Faith and love. And you say that faith and love are innate personal gifts. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, they have an energy context with among them. Uh, they're, they're, they, uh, faith and love, uh, they're, they're not idle words. These are action verbs. Uh, That's right. it, takes, it takes two or more or whatever to make, things, mm -hmm. make those happen. You know, those are action words. They have, and as a result, if there's action, then that equates to a, an energy of form of some sort. And, mm. and to me, it, that you can just label that energy, faith, and love, of course. And uh, um, so, and our creator connects in the same way. He, uh, he created us, in my opinion, the same energy that created all that is in the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. and made us in his image uh, it, through a, a love sense and a faith sense and a, and a, a sense of. Um, uh, connection there uh, through the electrical energy form, which is a form of, uh, there's a little voltage there. I, that's probably misuse of the word voltage, but there's a little energy there when you get together with another person, you know, mm -hmm. and your wife. Well, you know, there's an energy there. 
And it's the same energy that, that we have in our system. And when I was doing the research of this book, I ran into uh, uh, a, a, a doctor, uh, I forget her last name, but in the book there that discusses how that all it really is a, a fact of life that our neural system is, has electri it's electrical current that flows in our system. So there's an energy form there that makes it possible for us to connect with our creator uh, in an electrical sense. And it, it, it turns into that's how we, he senses our faith and our love. And, and re, as a result, we sense re, in a return, a trust and expect from him. And that's how I see that. I hope I didn't mess that up too bad, but it, it's a little, you know, I, I try to keep it as simple, but you know, it's hard to keep that simple. But the point is, it's real. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's, it's you know, it, it's it's definitely real, and you can feel it uh, in your heart, in your mind. You could see it, mm -hmm. even you know how sometimes when you touch someone, you get a little yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, and my my husband also just passed me another note, and which is an exact example of what you're saying. So mm -hmm. we take it's probably two years ago now. Yeah, because our son is too. We took a cross country trip from New Jersey to Utah uh -huh. because we were studying the scriptures and we wanted to see the land and we wanted to explore. And so we find a campsite in Utah mm -hmm. by the creek. And so there's a whole bunch, there's other families there and we're all, we're all hanging out. And so I, on our first night there, we have our tent and our sleeping bag, we have the dogs and we're rubbing the tent no, we're rubbing the sleeping bag and we're seeing electric yeah. currents yeah. Yeah. go through the sleeping bag. And yeah. we're looking at each other and we're like, this is real, right? We both see this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we wake up and we're asking the other families, like, mm -hmm. we saw electric currents running through our sleeping bag. And they said, yes, that was real. You weren't seeing things. They were talking about the energy from the creek in the, in the mountains, in the metals, in the earth, and things like that. And it was just, uh, I want to say life-changing because it stuck in our minds about how, about the flow of energy in general through, as you were saying, all creation. You know, we all have this spirit of life in us, whether you are a human, a butterfly, uh, rocks, water, especially. I mean, water has energy. Um, so it's very interesting and important. And we also talk about how, about the energy or the effect behind the words in which you speak. So if you say, I can't do this, this is a negative energy that you are projecting over your life or your situation. But what happens when we start saying, I will do this. I can do this. I know I can do this. Um, you know, transferable energy, as you were saying. Yeah. And that's exactly right. You, you're, you're, you summed it up just perfectly. Uh, the whole, the, everything is involved, some sort of energy around us. That's how our creator created everything in the beginning in my, but to my way of thinking. He had to, that's the only thing that makes sense when you think about it, just like you were just saying. That's the only thing that, that you can relate to, that you can understand and, and kind of quantify. Otherwise, it, 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 and, uh, and, and also, you know, I, I also think that our creator can only do good because of that. People try to blame yeah. this and that. And because and, when I was a kid, that's, there was a lot of fear preaching, you know, and that just didn't make any sense to me. And why, why would a father... Why would a father who what kind of father would ever try to run anything with fear of real, you know, our creator father, especially, you know, so I just took took that avenue and thought, well, you know, our creator can only do good because creators create not destroy. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, and so and going off of that, mm -hmm. another thing that I loved in your book is you. You always, and, and this is something that anybody, I feel anybody who watches this video or who comes across it can relate to hearing that you call that small inner voice. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though we all have it. And it seems as though, I mean, at least in my life and my husband and my son, it's always there. 
leading you and guiding you. If you're about to make a wrong decision, that voice is there telling you, oh, maybe you shouldn't be going this way or maybe, and it could be something small. Well, something that we think is small that could actually have a larger consequence or effect. Um, so let's talk about that. Why did you include that? I don't even want to call it a, what would we call that? Yeah, maybe a theme, but a theme, I'm trying to think of a word that's more tangible because for me in my life, that is, yeah, what was that? I think I know where you're going with this. Uh, I thought that was kind of important. I thought that was kind of important. Just a second. That's one of the people in the in the book trails company. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, and uh, they did a good job finding you. I'm glad they found you. <laughs> uh, uh, we're, let's see, get my mind going in the right direction to get. Um, I thought it was so important for people to understand that there is a really a connection between the Father, our Creator, and us in, in a way, because the words in his image had to mean something. What was that image? Well, the image, the only one that made sense to me is some kind of energy-related hookup, energy-related connection. And when I was looking through, and then this is right in plain old uh, Siri stuff, uh, Siri uh, pointed this out that we have a, a neural system and it is a, has electrical nature. Well, right off the bat, now that connects it to a to an energy uh, relationship, and that belong, we know where that came from. So it, it gives him so he can say in his word in his image. Well, then we are in his image in a sense from an energy standpoint. You know, we're energy connected, and so. He, that's his means to do exactly what he wants to do all the way through the Bible. And that's to be like a father and take care of it and, you know, just be a good father. <laughs> yeah. And wants to spoil us rotten with good love. <laughs> Such a good, yeah. He's a wonderful. Loving person. compassion. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, okay. Another thing that I want to mention from your book is you talk about how there are different evidences all around that show and prove that our creator is real. One is the event of childbirth in itself. And it's funny because you talk about childbirth on page 36 of your book and our son Truth was born on March 6th. I mean, know that because I thought that was funny. Um, and, you know, even just being a mother and going through childbirth, it's, it's, as a, as a mother, there's really nothing that you can do in that process. You're literally just a vessel. And then he does everything else and the child, and before you know it, boop, the child's here. And uh, it, it really is, I, I love that you included that experience in your book because it really is the truth that I mean from beginning to end when you're pregnant when the child comes and then every day when you watch the child grow and grow and grow it's just like wow I it almost feels like you can't even you can't even take credit for it because it, he, it's a true miracle yes thank you <laughs> it's a true miracle it truly yes is. Mm. And, and that's because you girls are a true miracle. You know, you think about <laughs> you girls are a true miracle to make that happen. You're helping him do the, his that multiplication that he talks about in his that he wants his girls all to help out with the multiplication. Us guys, we're supposed to be good servants and and uh, do whatever we're supposed to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I like that. Um, one more thing I want to ask you. Sure. And I don't know, I don't know if I'm thinking too deep into this, but I was reading a part of your book where you talk about falling off the horse at the finish line. Could you briefly recount that um, <laughs> anecdote? 
And then, so I'm thinking, and that's why I'm saying, I don't know if I'm thinking too deep into this, but falling off the horse at the finish line, I put in my notes, I put metaphorical symbolism. Like, is there a metaphor or is there a problem related to that? Yeah. Well, we were all coming up on the finish line, you know, and then all of a sudden everybody's, you and I were hitting horses and I was just riding bareback because back then my idols were all um, Native Americans. I wanted to be like, you know, every boy has some kind of, heroes back then we, we didn't get the there weren't any football teams really getting started you know the nfl there were the uh, baseball teams of course you know and mine were the dodgers a little bit but i didn't know enough about because they were in new york i was way back in north dakota right up against the canadian border next to montana so all my good friends as far as i was concerned were all native americans and uh, so i used to ride bareback all the time like they did I didn't want to be like uh, like these other guys. And they had saddles, but the point is, I was kind of I was sitting up there, kind of vulnerable. If you get my drift, kind of vulnerable because I had nothing to hold on to, and uh, somehow I got n- nudged and felt slipped off my horse. <laughs> nudged. Yes, by and how, how old were you when that happened? You know, I think I was somewhere around ten, eleven. I I can't remember what I put in the book. It was somewhere around ten, eleven. I think in that ball, ballpark. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, uh, I, I, I didn't start high school yet, let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. you're pretty young. Yeah. Um, okay, one more question. And I oh, always you, say one more question and then I, I always I think another one. You're asking these and you can call anytime, by the way. You you have, you can make this anytime. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. I appreciate you know, you got that. This work and you've taught me something. I didn't know how to make this work, but you taught me. So you have a well. You have, here you go. And you for anybody who's going to be watching this, this is Mr. Link's first time doing Zoom, and we're happy that he shared this experience with Hidden yeah. Gems. Yeah, so you can rubber stamp that you can call anytime. Now that we know oh. how to, you taught me something. That's right. Yeah, and I, we really appreciate you. Um, Raymond's writing a note for me, so it seems he might have a question also. What would you say is the main takeaway that you want readers to have after reading this book? Uh, Well, my desire is, you know, I made a big thing out of Matthew 28. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28. And then Matthew 28, Jesus says, please, he didn't uh, ask for uh, uh, churches or anything. He was asking for people at the time, just passed one to another about him you know that father sent him our creator sent him and he just said please pass on from one to another through his disciples that were there you know the church kind of evolved after that and kind of be be, uh, the church in a physical sense a building you know they kind of started during after that church actually means people in in a larger sense you know all the people and so he uh wanted us to pass that on and that's what i would like this book to be passed on so that's why I was so so ultra happy when I found out you guys had it, to, you know, to pass it on like that as a kind of a means of me doing my uh, desire to be a kind of a worldwide uh, cyber uh, missionary vehicle, if you get my drift, and my book to be a missionary vehicle, because I can't get to all the places, but if this gets, can go here and there and everywhere. And when I was looking at the, uh, Google, I, I found out that my book is already available in South Africa. How about that? And it also, wow. and it's and, and and also Google has it set up in several languages. This is just this has been the craziest venture in my life, and and so many things happen. I just cannot believe. I was thinking when I wrote this, you know, I was going to have to hand deliver it to the publisher somewhere because uh, it was put out by Balboa, part of the Hay House Company. And I thought I was going to have to go up there and see them, you know, bring along copies and stick it in a thing and hopper and have it look spit out the other end. No, none of that happened. Everything I've done, and this is the, the, the funniest, craziest thing about this, everything I've done with this book, I could have done sitting right here in my underwear. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and, so then, and then I get to meet people like you. Think about how, how fun this is. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey. your, your your heart is so in the right direction. It's just it's such a pleasure to to be a part of this. So you can call anytime. 
-hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, we're happy to have your book honoring your our creator our yeah. not your our our yeah. all all of ours yeah. Yeah. um creator here at hidden gems literary emporium um yeah. i just want to link rights but oh okay so there's one more couple... thing you're expecting here to ask you to ask what was that there's one more thing here i'm expecting you to ask me mm -hmm. you're right um <laughs> so ray passed me a note because you said you were riding the horse bareback, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Ray said that when you ride the horse bareback, there's a greater connection that is real and trusting between the man and the animal. Yeah, you can say that. You can definitely say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. then he also said that that character Link uh, also rides bareback. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -mm. Now, didn't now know. isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is interesting. It is what? interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the funny thing about Link, the character, is that that is one of Raymond's favorite characters from childhood. Oh, okay. And way before we met Link, the person, the author, you, uh -huh. we, uh, you know, mm -hmm. would play video games, Link video games, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. because they're very well they are they're storytelling games and so we like video games like that where you have to actually read a story and go through a story and things like that so it's just funny how link the character uh had a role in our relationship and then now here's link the author the person the human it's just funny <laughs> yeah one question you gotta ask you gotta ask um it. What's the question? Oh, well, I do have, I do want to ask you if people want to ask you questions about this book, if they want to get in touch with you, maybe give you some feedback, what, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Well, you can, uh, um, you obviously have my email. Yes. That and I can all, and I, and I'll give you my phone number. I think you, you have, you have my phone number, right? Yes. Yeah. You have that. So I'm I'm available to you uh, anytime you want. You, you, this has been so much fun. I've enjoyed every bit of this. But I got to have one more. I got to. You got to have me one more question, and, and it's got to be who I dedicated the book to. Okay, Mr. Ling, who did you dedicate this book to? The donkey. I saw that in the in the first page, actually. Yeah. Uh huh. And you know why? Mm -hmm. why he was a part the donkey has been a part of all of uh, our creator's prophecies regarding the, the coming of jesus mary mary he was a part of mary every prophecy involving mother mary and, I, and everything to do with mary and joseph there was a donkey involved and i couldn't figure out for a long time why but there was always there i was always couldn't figure out why did they, why did they pick a donkey why did they pick a real horse you know but you now they picked a donkey because it's got a, like a servant mindset, you know, kind of just easy going, you know, you, you, you can, it's, it's just so hard. A donkey is just so, uh, got such a sweet de demeanor, but he created that donkey well before Jesus came along. And so there was, a, to my way of thinking, you know, I, it, I said I had a law degree. Well, in the, when you study law, you'll understand the importance of notary and contracts and all kinds of things. Well, a donkey has a beautiful cross on its back. Every single one I've ever seen has a cross on its back. So it had to be created there. And in my way of thinking, it was created there uh, if, on purpose, just like the way women are created so that they can give childbirth. There was a, there was a, there was a connection that our father, is so, he was so thorough when, his, when he created everything, including girls and donkeys with crosses on their back. And to my way of thinking, is that cross was put there. And of course, Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem before he was take, taken to the cross for our benefit. And then, well, and then, of course, now that's a vacated cross. But there's also a cross on the donkey that took him in there. To me, two crosses make a right. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the two crosses make something, make something good. Anyway, the cross that we wear on our uh, our uh, 
the neck and uh, the also the cross on the donkey to me is God's way of notarizing his word or a contract with his people. Kind of like notarizing his everything he's doing with his people. That's my perception. That was the, the ending perception that I was trying to leave in the book. Mm -hmm. I did not know that a donkey had Nobody knows that's, that's why it's out there. That's why I did it. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna have to go on Google Images. Yeah. Uh -huh. I did not know that at all. That's well, very interesting. That, that's part of my whole process of trying to get that word out there. Get the get yeah. respect for the donkey. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's got a perfect cross. Mm -hmm. that's nice. hmm. And they do all over the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, yeah. um, and thank you for just putting your, your heart and your soul into this book. And, you know, you, this has been such a lovely conversation and we've talked on the phone before and you just always so, so uh, pleasant and positive. Yeah. And, and I just, I really appreciate you as a person. And I appreciate that you put everything into writing this book for us all to read and enjoy. And I want to encourage everyone who's interested in this topic to come on by Hidden Gems Literary Emporium and get your copy of Honoring Our Creator by Link Thompson. You can also give us a call and schedule a shipping arrangement for this book. We'd be happy to ship it to your home. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson, for your time today. Okay. I love our conversations and i hope to talk to you again very very soon oh please do yeah. all right now yeah okay have nice a nice. great and beautiful day yeah you too Jeez. all right talk to you soon <laughs> good night bye-bye